welcome to the OBR Perspectives Interactive Case Study Series. In this case study, Dr. Adam Brufsky discusses the treatment of HER2 positive breast cancer in a 62-year-old female. Patient's characteristics included... This is a 62-year-old woman who about five years ago presented with a 4.5 centimeter left side of breast mass. Uh, it was palpable. That's usually how some of the larger tumors are uh, found. And uh, she actually had two to three palpable axillary lymph nodes. We did a corneal biopsy at the time, and she had invasive ductal pans carcinoma. Uh, the estrogen receptor was 75%, the progesterone receptor was 10%, uh, and the HER2 was 3 plus by uh, immunohistochemistry. We didn't have to do uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization, uh, mainly because the IHC was 3 plus. And generally with HER2 positive breast cancer, if the IHC is 3 plus, you don't have to um, uh, do FISH. Uh, had it been 2 plus, we would have done FISH. Patient's treatment history included... She received uh, TCHP, which again is docetaxel, carboplatin, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab uh, therapy. Uh, and again, this was actually um, ne is neoadjuvant therapy. Most, most women receive neoadjuvant chemotherapy now uh, with, TC with either TCHP or ACTHP. Uh, there actually was a trial uh, called... Um, uh, TRAIN-2 that was presented at ASCO this year. Uh, and in TRAIN-2, TCHP was found to be equivalent to ACTHP with fewer side effects. So I suspect now in the future, most of us will be giving TCHP uh, and not ACTHP. But nonetheless, she had the six cycles of the therapy. She tolerated well. She then had a left mastectomy and axillary dissection. Postoperatively, she had two centimeters of residual disease uh, consistent with her prior uh, tumor that had a core biopsy and she had two of 10 lymph nodes involved that she would have received had this been not 2015, but actually say 2018, she would have received a year of TDM1, uh, trastuzumab and tansine. Uh, that's based on the Catherine trial, uh, where this actually had an improvement in uh, three-year disease-free survival. Uh, but unfortunately, that wasn't available yet. Uh, so she got trastuzumab and pertuzumab to complete a year, and then was put on an astrazole. So she did well for about two years and then developed shortness of breath. Uh, we did scanning of her and she had a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, and she had uh, 10 lung lesions, uh, the largest 2.5 centimeters. Um, we did a biopsy of them and actually the ER had become much less. This happens about 10% of the time. It was now only 2%. So she really wasn't ER positive anymore, but had her two, three plus disease by immunohistochemistry. So based on the Cleopatra trial, uh, which was a trial of um, uh, docetaxel and uh, trastuzumab versus docetaxel, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab, which showed a uh, progression-free survival in uh, pretreated women of 18 months uh, and an overall survival of over five years in terms of median uh, survival. We gave her THP uh, for eight cycles, and she had a near-complete response in her lung. Uh, and then we didn't put her on any more hormonal therapy because the ER was 2%. Uh, and uh, we then started her on uh, trastuzumab and pertuzumab continuously every three weeks. She did well for about two years, which is about how long, a year and a half to two years you do on this therapy. Uh, and then she had a CT scan of chest, abdomen, and pelvis that showed really no real lung lesions, but actually a new two, two centimeter liver lesion. And at that point, we did the standard of care, uh, which still remains a standard of care, which is trastuzumab and tansine, TDM1. Uh, which I think most of you know uh, is a, an antibody drug conjugate uh, where trastuzumab has bound to it DM1, which is a microtubule uh, destabilizer. Uh, and within three months, she had a partial response in her liver. So after three or four cycles of this, she had a partial response to her liver and she's continued on the drug uh, and actually did pretty well. But in June, 2020, uh, she had a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Again, uh, she now has progression in her liver uh, the index lesion is now 3.5 centimeters, uh, and there are two more lesions, each 1.5 centimeter each. Uh, at this point, we do a brain MRI just to be sure she doesn't have brain metastases. Uh, and then we offer her a brand new drug that just got approved six months ago, a uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan. Uh, and basically, uh, this drug um, uh, is also an antibody drug conjugate. Uh, it is trastuzumab uh, bound in this case to DXD, which is an exotecan derivative. And in, a, in trials at San Antonio uh, 2015, and again published in the Lincoln Journal in early 2020, uh, uh, this drug actually had a disease control rate 
uh, of over 97%, uh, response rate of 60%. Uh, and in data that's gonna, it was presented and actually was been updated at this year's San Antonio Breast Symposium that's coming up. Uh, it turns out that uh, this has a, I think, a, a, a progression of survival of over, I believe, you know, 15, 16 months, uh, a median survival that's 24 months or greater. And these are in patients that are heavily, heavily pretreated. Uh, I mean, the median number of regimens when they went on this trial was six. Uh, so this is really an important drug. Destiny Breast 01, a summary of adverse events in overall population. The other important thing, this drug works really well, it's given every three weeks, but the problem is that very rarely it can cause an interstitial um, lung disease. Uh, and uh, that's a complication that can be fatal. Actually, in the original trial, I think 2.2% of patients died uh, out of the 184 patients on uh, this initial phase two trial. Uh, however, now with recognition, which basically is anything on a CT scan that looks weird, like any kind of interstitial pattern that in the past we would have blow off, we wouldn't do anything about, um, I think that you really have to act on it and consider it to be interstitial lung disease uh, in somebody who uh, is on this drug. Any shortness of breath, any fatigue that's new and abnormal needs to be investigated. I think you know, it turns out with all of this increased awareness about it, uh, the mortality rate uh, from ILD has gone down dramatically. And I think in most of the recent trials, there was a trial, I think, that was presented at ASCO uh, in non-small cell lung cancer, uh, where the incidence of fatal ILD was zero. Uh, it was about a 7.5 or 7.6% discontinuation rate. So, you know, the bottom line is that it does happen, uh, but this drug really, uh, I think, is going to make a big difference. If um, this patient had had uh, an MRI that had brain metastases, I think uh, we would have considered using a slightly different regimen, uh, which is tucatinib, which is a HER2 tyrosine kinase, a, a, a capecitabine, and trastuzumab. Uh, that was shown in a trial called HER2 CLIMB, also published in the England Journal earlier this year, um, to actually have uh, a really substantial benefit uh, in treating uh, active brain mets, and in fact, improving survival, overall survival of patients, as well as survival below the neck as well. Uh, and I think because of that, that would have been another option. Um, so those are really the two, I think this really has changed the thinking of everybody in third line uh, metastatic disease and beyond. Um, there also is uh, neratinib uh, in Cape Cytobine, a third option that was recently approved by the FDA in a trial called NALA. Uh, and I actually presented that data uh, at ASCO 2019, and it was recently published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Um, that also has benefit, uh, uh, progression-free survival benefit, although not really a significant overall survival benefit. So that's another a third option for patients. So really in this third line setting, we have a lot of options. And what's really interesting uh, is that uh, nowadays, um, you know, the median survival of a woman with metastatic or two positive breast cancer uh, is uh, over five years. And I think that we're getting to the point uh, where a third of patients actually uh, are surviving eight years and beyond.